What's going on YouTube? Today's video is going to be on Mid-America Q-Lace accessories. I ordered some accessories from Mid-America Q-Lace and this is what I ordered. This is a rider mount. The rider mount, this is what it comes with. The rider didn't come with it itself and of course the bit, but it comes with the L bracket and of course the bracket to hold the router. So this was a pretty much of a tight fit. I had to do a little bit modification on the router, but this is gonna be a dedicated router just for cutting my cues. So I'm not worried about that because one thing about aluminum and steel, aluminum will always give and you can always mess up the thread. So I'm not moving this back and forth. This is gonna be permanent. And it comes with this. This is how you would route it, uh, mount it. So you have two positions. You can actually mount it this way on your slide and you can actually cut cut your um, your your shafts, your tenants, and making tr threads if you not, if you have um, a thread count. And then of course the bolt will just be bolted right here. It didn't come with the Allen wrench, but this is a, how to get an Allen wrench. This is a 316, so you just get a 316 Allen wrench and it fits perfectly. For making tapers, what I'm going to be using this for on the cues is you would mount it this way. I have it to the highest point and it'll be mounted this way. So it's pretty much a directional because they have a groove in here so it can only fit in one direction. It can't go backwards. And then you would mount it. You would tighten this and it locks in place. So I also ordered another tailstock with a dead center. Reason why I ordered a tailstock because I wanted to make sure my other tailstock had perfect consciousness and I don't want to be moving that when I have to do alignment. So this is prop, um, on offset right now. I'm going to go show you on the lay where I put this to zero and how I get the offsets to cut my tapers. And of course I got another post, uh, tool post um, holder. The reason why I got another holder is because this one has papers for shims to align this pairing tool. I do not want to take on and off because when when um, setting this up on your lathe, you want your tool um, exactly on center on your um, on your on your lathe itself. So that's one reason I don't want to take take this out, put it back on, and reset. It's on perfect height. So we're gonna go ahead on the lathe and set this up to make this a zero, and then I'll show you how I do my offset. And I will mount this also, and you'll see how it looks on offsets. I partially set up my lathe so I can do the tailstock and headstock alignment. As you can see, this is a dead center. So the run out is about 1,000 off. So that's pretty good. I got it with um, adjusting some of the jaws and I got it down to 1,000. Now we're gonna go ahead and use this tool. This is the edge. And the way this tool works is you would actually put your dead centers and align it this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I align this. First, we're gonna go ahead and put the, the tailstock in. And I also use the slide and use a, cap, um, a dial indicator so that you can see where the zeros are on the edge itself. Once you get the edge secured on your, your lay, you wanna go ahead and lock everything down. So this is locked down, tailstock's locked down. The tailstock is offset at 200 right now to, to north north side on the, um, on the positive on the Y axis because I'm, I'm cutting, cutting uh, tapers on some of the cues. So you get your slide and you get your dial indicator and then you would run this Lock, I lock everything down and I lock this where it hits zero. And you can see, and this is actually touching. So this is pre precision grounded. So that's why it's pretty much on a zero. You can also see it on this side. So 
see the dial indicator doesn't move. So the way I, I use this bar and to align my tailstock to my headstock is first I'll get this and run this to zero. Tighten up my slide, set the dial indicator to zero. And once this is at zero, this tells me exactly how far off my tailstock is. So right now my tailstock is is off by four thousand um, four thousandths off, going to like I said this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to zero, and the way to set this to zero is you have the um, set screw back here, and you would loosen it. Once you loosen it. Loosen up your tail stock so it has movement and you would want to get this to zero. And lock this. I think I still have a taper. And I do. It still has a taper on it. I can see it. So it's almost zero. Verify this is gonna be zero. Yep. So that's at zero. And that's at zero. And the best way to test it to make sure you're at actually zeros is actually you move the bar itself now. I use a razor blade to test how accurate my uh, dead centers are. Slide this all the way back, put that on the side, slide your tailstock to your headstock. Lock your tailstock in, press on it and your razor blade should float directly in the middle. So now I know my tailstock is pretty much dead center to my headstock. I got my tailstock and headstock still aligned. It's uh, pretty much zero. As you can see, this is the razor blade. It's still spinning perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this razor blade. Now I'm gonna do is get my tailstock offset so I can do tapers on cues. So first we're gonna measure the tail stock itself. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this and slide it back. So I have some play to work, some room to work with. <clears throat> and you would want to measure your your tail stock. So this is on a slide and this is the base. So you make sure you get a set of calipers and you get that at zero. Once you get that at zero, you would slide your calipers from the base to the slide where it's actually sliding. And mine says 950, 0 0.950. So you would write that down. So my center is at point, 
0.9950. So now you would figure out most butts of a Q is 1.250 and the joint is about for my predator is 0 0.840 so you would subtract those and this would give us 410 so now you have the difference but the thing is when you're using your test stock with a router you're cutting both sides so you would divide this number by two so two divided by four, one zero, two zero five. So now you have 0 0.205. That's the distance you need to move your tailstock on the on the um, on the y-axis. So you're gonna go for me since my router is on the opposite side of me. So I have to actually add 0 0.205. So my number is 950 plus 205. So 5, 5, and 1.1. So I have to move my tail stock one point, to read 1.155. So let's go ahead and set that up on the um, calipers. So this is at 110. 11 and 5 5 so now this is I'm moving mines on the positive y-axis so I got to slide my tailstock that way towards my router Make sure this is locked and you've got the numbers. Now I have offset from my tail stock to my head stock. So when I put a cue in on the back side, it should be a straight line. I slid my headstock and my and the motor, of course, all the way back on the bed itself. So this should fit my cue. I have the tailstock all the way out here, and I installed the slide. So let's go ahead and install this uh, router mount on the slide itself. So first thing I always do is line these square blocks up. Once that slides in, then I'll get them almost tight so that they don't slip out and then you get this I have this set it all the way to the max height so it makes it easier for me so I get it all the way as high as I can make sure that's tight now I have access to actually tighten these So I slide it all the way to the back. One thing about this um, router mount, it's pretty well balanced where when you install the router, it's pretty much the weight of the router itself. It doesn't actually tip it over. It's almost you could stand on its own. So let's go ahead and install the butt of a Q. You will lock it in. So you have it pretty much almost tight where when because you don't have anything grabbing, you just have the dead centers grabbing the Q itself. So you know if you actually have the right taper the back side should be a straight line because your slide only moves on the x-axis uh, it doesn't move on the y-axis so 
so it should only move it should be a perfect gap between from this joint all the way to the butt so that tells you you have a good taper if this rudder was on this side it would actually hit hit the cube itself I just did a brief review on the router mount, the tailstock with the dead center, and the tool post. Hit that like button, leave a comment below, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hopefully this video is informative. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe me. Don't forget to thumbs up. Bye bye. <laughs>